Why am I getting email from a dead person? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. This is a troubling scenario that happens all too often. Here's the question. I am very upset this morning. Some way, somehow, I got an email from a dear friend who recently passed. The message was sent today from his email. His family also received the same email and they ensure the rest of us friends, they do not have access to his password and they want to know how this happened. Is this legal? Is somebody tapping into his account? Is it a hacker? Can you please shed some light on this? Also, does his family need to take any sort of actions to somehow delete his account so this doesn't happen again in the future? There are a lot of confused people over this. Needless to say, quite upset also. This one action has stirred up some very deep feelings of the recent passing of our loved one. I can absolutely uh, understand why this would be uh, a very disturbing event. Um, unfortunately, the news that I have to share isn't terribly great, um, but I will share with you what I th some of the options, some of the things that might be going on, some of the steps, what few there are you or the family can take. And even some things to prepare for in the future. So I don't mean to be flippant, but if no one has the password, it's going to be difficult enough to regain access to the account, even if you're alive. I have many articles for people who are the legitimate living account holders who are having troubles getting into their account. What that means is, that when a third party, say a hacker, tries to get access to an account of someone else, alive or dead, they it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult because there's a lot of security in place to prevent unauthorized access. That often makes it practically impossible to regain access to the account. That unfortunately limits our options. First though, let's think about what may have happened. What I call potential cause number one is a random hack. Your friend's account was in the wrong place at the wrong time and somehow, some way, a hacker happened to hack it. The reason I think it, a hacker may be involved in a case like this is that the email you're talking about was sent to friends and family, addresses that we can reasonably assume were in the contacts list associated with that account. That tends to imply a person having access and using that contacts list for whatever they're trying to do. Now, the reason I'm skeptical about this is that a random hack is actually liable to happen at any time. The fact that it happened coincidental with the death of your friend makes me suspicious. And that actually leads me to potential cause number two, a targeted hack. This is more difficult because with the uh, account owner no longer being around and no one else having access to a, his account legitimately, many of the techniques a hacker might use to gain access to the account aren't there. For example, if you don't have access to the account, there's nobody to fall for a phishing scam, or there's no machine that's typing in the correct password that perhaps has malware, like a keylogger on it. So while I think this is less likely, in some ways it kind of sort of makes sense. This one kind of sort of really targets the timing, but in general, it also seems somewhat unlikely. Potential cause number three is random spam. In other words, the account wasn't hacked. Remember that it is incredibly easy to make an email look like it comes from anyone, regardless of who actually sent it. That means then that a spammer could very easily make an email look like it came from your deceased friend. Now I say once again, this is less likely. This is the reason I'm skeptical about this is for two things. One, uh, the timing again, is just too spot on for this to truly be random. And as I said earlier, the fact that the friends and family in the contacts list are being uh, contacted 
also makes this seem like it's something a little bit more than just random spam. Potential cause number four, and this one, I suppose, while I don't consider it likely, I consider it the least unlikely of the four techniques that I'm talking about, um, in other words, the most likely, is if somebody had a reason to do this intentionally, they could basically make the emails that they're sending look like they came from your deceased friend, just like a spammer. I call this targeted spam because this is an individual who's using spammers techniques to make email looks like it comes from somewhere other than it does, and then is specifically targeting the friends and family of this person. This doesn't necessarily require account access. They may know the email addresses of all of the people because heck, maybe they're one of them, or maybe they are someone who has access to that kind of information. Also be aware that Things like deaths are public records, and that means that uh, there are people out there, there are low lives out there who do scan for death notices of recently deceased individuals and really do try to scam their families. I've not heard of it specifically being email, but it wouldn't surprise me in the least if it was yet another technique used by those kinds of folks. Now, there are some other clues. Um, you didn't mention what was in the email that everybody got. Um, that's a big clue, honestly, depending on what was said and how it was said. Um, that can tell us a lot. For example, if it's just generic spam, you know, body part enhancement, illicit drugs, whatever, then you know it probably wasn't targeted and it probably was, in some sense or another, truly random. On the other hand, if the, if the message actually shows knowledge of your family and your situation, then yeah, you'll have to look a little bit closer as to who might potentially be involved. You asked if it was legal. And honestly, I don't know. Um, I suspect that it's not. I suspect that depending on what the email contents said, it may or may not be. But ultimately, it's not something that I think being legal or not, is necessarily going to help. Even if it's truly illegal, then you would take it to law enforcement and then try to convince them to spend their already scarce resources on this problem. And as much as I hate to say it, I do believe that they're going to say, we're sorry for your loss, but we have bigger problems that we need to spend our time on. Now, that doesn't mean I don't think you should report it to law enforcement. I do. I think that that's a fine thing to do, if nothing else, as to simply get it on record. Um, that way, if there ever is something in the future that you need to do, some action you intend to take, then you'll at least have that specific documentation that you tried to take it to law enforcement um, and it went nowhere. The question I get often is, okay, great. We've got this situation happening. Can I close the account? The short answer is no. The problem here is that in order to close the account, you need to be able to access the account. You need to be able to log into the account. When you think about it, that's kind of important because otherwise people that want to could just randomly close other people's accounts. So if you don't have access to the account and you don't have a way to recover access to the account, then I'm afraid there's nothing you can do directly with the account. However, one of the things I would recommend you do is contact the email provider of your friend's email. Let them know that this person has passed away. If possible, provide documentation. A death certificate is usually the documentation that's required. Again, email providers may or may not react to this kind of stuff because it's very possible that they're just getting a flood of fake reports all the time for one person trying to close um, you know, this other person's account, even though there's nothing going on. Um, but it's honestly about the only direction I can send you that stands a chance of getting the account taken down. 
Uh, different providers have different rules about how they handle the death of their subscribers, but I would definitely try and contact that email provider and see what they're willing to do and what their requirements might be. So bottom line, my, I'll call it my frustrating, but most pragmatic solution is simply this. Ignore it all. Mark spam as spam. If it becomes too annoying, set up a filter that simply redirects email from this person who no longer exists directly to your trash or spam folder and let it go at that. Um, like I said, I'm not hopeful that you'll actually get true resolution for um, many of the things we might otherwise want. If things start to get worse, um, then of course you would escalate either to the providers or the police or whomever. But honestly, the most pragmatic solution when you find yourself in the situation, especially when the situation is just starting, is to do what you need to do to essentially ignore the messages and do that automatically if you need to, and then simply try to move on as best you can. I'm sorry for your loss. I hope this was helpful. Uh, for updates, for comments from others with who may also have ideas on this topic, visit askleo.com slash 3825. I'm Leo Notenboom, and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.